In this video, I want to talk about a criminally overlooked watch from Tudor. It's probably no secret on this channel. I try to I feature the brand quite often. Uh, I really do think it's probably one of the best brands in the industry. The the value proposition that the brand offers is quite good when you compare it to more higher end brands. Obviously, you get quality, you get value, and you get like kind of respect. It's the kind of brand that you know if you're wearing it on your wrist at a, like some kind of watch meet, you know you're not gonna you you know all the watch knobs aren't gonna just roll their eyes on you. The brand commands respect from the watch community. I guess I kind of want to start the video by going over kind of a Tudor's history. As many of you know, Tudor is a Swiss manufacturer of luxury wristwatches based in Geneva, Switzerland. Most known for being the sister company of Rolex. Registered in 1926 by Hans Wolsdorf, the founder of Rolex, Wolsdorf stated on the founding of Tudor, For some years now, I have been considering the idea of making a watch that our agents could sell at a more modest price than our Rolex watches, and yet one that would attain the standard of dependability for which Rolex is famous. I decided to form a separate company with the object of making and marketing this new watch. It is called the Tudor Watch Company. As it currently does to this day, Tudor watches were originally equipped with off-the-shelf movements while using uh, Rolex quality cases and bracelets allowing it to provide the reliability and dependability of Rolex but at a lower price. Some of the more notable developments in the brand include in 1952 the release of the self-winding uh, Tudor prints. They used a Rolex self-winding mechanism. Tudor Oyster Princes were included in the 1952 British Scientific Expedition to Greenland. The adoption of the Oyster case and self-winding rotor facilitated Tudor's move into the production of two watches. The French Navy, also known as the Marine Nationale, was involved in field research for a Tudor diving watch. From the 1960s to the 1980s, Watches were supplied to the French Navy in bulk without bracelets, so that all were worn with military-issued straps. Tudor launched its first diving watch in 1954, the Oyster Prince Submariner, waterproof to 100 meters. This was increased to 200 meters by 1958. Over the decades, Tudor became well known for its tool watches, producing watches for professional divers in the military. Between the 1960s and 1980s, several navies issued Tudor Submariners to their divers, including the U.S. Navy SEAL and the French Marine Nationale. Further developments brought features like snowflake hands that have been reintroduced into Tudor's diving watches of today. It was also in 1969 where Tudor moved away from the Tudor Rose as their logo in favor of the shield, a symbol of solidity and unfailing reliability. In this video, I want to talk about a new Tudor that I just bought, but uh, I didn't buy this watch for me. I bought it for my wife. And honestly, this is probably the most un underappreciated watch that Tudor makes right now. You know, I think the 1926 is probably a little more popular given that it's the you know, the entry level uh, Tudor watch. But uh, this one is very much underappreciated and it's, it's actually like a crime, I think. I don't understand what's... I don't understand why this thing doesn't sell, why there's only like six or seven videos about this watch. None of the, none of which are, I would consider very lengthy. Um, but uh, yeah, this is, uh, so for today I'm wearing my, of course, my Tudor Glamour. Uh, you'll kind of see why I decided to wear this watch today. But uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's check this watch out. So I got her. This is the Tudor style. Uh, I kind of tried to introduce her to like slightly better watches here and there and you know honestly she you know one thing I've discovered with people is you can't turn a watch you know you kind of you kind of have to get into a hobby on your own you can't push it on other people and my wife is definitely one of those but you know this is this is one that she when she saw it, she was like that is a beautiful watch and uh yeah so let me let's take a closer look at this thing and uh talk about why this thing is so why nobody talks about these watches why nobody wants them and why there's so few videos on it you know and you know my thoughts on it so i'll just get the box out of the way now real quick uh this is just a little instruction manual in there that's that's about it and a little little place to put your extra links or something i mean look at this thing it's got the fluted bezel it's got you know the champagne dial it's even got a you know three diamonds on uh, on three six and nine i mean this thing is pretty sweet this is a very nice watch 
if you're looking to get a deal on this watch, like on the gray market or something, which is where I bought it, I bought it on the gray market. Um, it's hard, they're hard to find, uh, given, I guess the demand is either too low or I don't know if Tudor's not producing them as much as they used to, but, uh, they're just not available. Um, you probably would have to go to like an ED and play, pay retail, maybe you get a tiny little discount on the, one of these, but, uh, they probably have to special order them from the, from Tudor to get you one. And I don't want to go through that route and I don't want to play full retail because this is, uh, I think this watch retails for 3550 and this again i should mention this is the 34 millimeter watch it still has all the tags on it get your reference there so it looks like it's m n12 313 is the reference number again this is a 34 millimeter here nobody really talks about these watches and you know for a while i wasn't really considering it to uh the style but it it honestly looks really good in person and I'm, on a, I'm honestly kind of jealous and uh, you know I actually can uh, this this 34 version is a little small for me obviously even though uh, back in the 50s 60s men would wear 34 millimeter watches all the time and it was considered normal in fact uh, it was definitely a, a more of a normal it was a normal men's size for a watch well let me uh, let me get it off the pillow again a very customary like uh, Tudor pillow still got all the stickers and stuff uh, my wife you know, obviously she's seen it and she likes it and she but she allowed me to, you know, film a video of it. And, uh, yeah, still got all the stickers that you would get. It's got, uh, you know, these, all of these, like, uh, all of these Tudor, the, like the non, non Black Bay Tudors, all the, all the, they all have the, uh, the little, little clasp mechanism. So you get, I think, so you get, so you get like two levels. You see so it clasp, it locks on there and then you have another level right there. But same, same goes for this one. It's got a pretty good, uh, pretty good uh, deployment mechanism. Honestly, if you're looking for something for your wife or your girlfriend, uh, uh, and you wanna, and you don't wanna spend like Rolex money to get the fluted bezel look, and you wanna get something, this is pretty much the closest you can get if you wanna get a brand new watch without going pre-owned for like a Tudor print, uh, Tudor, uh, I guess a princess, I guess it would be, or honestly, you can get a. They make Tudor princes uh, that are that are 34 millimeters, which would be very appropriate for a woman. Uh, again, champagne dial, you have, looks, you have golden handset there. Uh, beautiful sunburst dial. I think Tudor does a really good job with the, with the champagne color. I mean, I mean, they're, they're kind of like related to Rolex and nobody, probably nobody does a better job than Rolex with these uh, champagne dials. The fluted bezel is beautiful. It's, I believe it's a uh, fluted bezel, solid gold, I believe. Um, and the, I believe what is customary with most tutors is the uh, the bracelet is sort of it's like not quite cap it's like it's capped I believe so it's like a mixture of steel and and gold. Obviously they do that for because if, if it was just gold you know you'd probably get the bracelet would stretch out over time and the you know Rolex does the same thing. I actually have the same I have the same thing with my with my glamour as well. Um, but yeah, this thing is beautiful. And I'm actually, I kind of want to get myself like a, like the stainless steel version with the, with a, maybe a 38 millimeter one with the stainless steel, like fluted bezel. It kind of sucks that you can't get the, you know, a white gold version of this two fluted bezel. If you want to get like a golden fluted bezel, you got to go yellow gold. Uh, and I'm actually kind of tempted myself to get one of those, but I already have, again, I already have my glamour here, which is doing fine. I, I Honestly, I'm pretty. I'm not really a flashy guy. I really am pretty casual. I'm wearing actually wearing shorts right now and a t-shirt. So uh, I do appreciate these watches, and I actually love the look of them. I just don't have the opportunity to wear them around, other than just around the house and stuff, which I'll wear. I'll pretty much wear one of these whenever I want, just uh, not outside. So the bracelets, uh, just like any other Tudor uh, bracelets, really nicely finished. Uh, looks like a five-link design. I would say the outer links are brushed. Center link is uh, polished in the steel, and then you obviously you have two links with uh, with polished gold, with gold as well. Looks like you got a nice milled polished point underneath there. Uh, probably signed with Tudor. I don't want to take all. The, I want to let my wife take off all the stickers. So I'll probably bring this watch on a little later for another video that I'm planning to make. A solid case back, just like Tudors and Rolexes. That's very typical. They rarely have you know a display case back or see-through case back 
obviously it has solid end links and uh, yeah, it's overall a quality watch. So the innards, uh, I believe this has uh, the Tudor T601, I believe. I'll probably put some details on the screen about the movement. It beats at uh, 20,800 vibrations per hour. It's based on an, e an ETA 2824, I believe, and, and you know, workhorse movement. Uh, some of the benefits of getting a move one of these watches is the ease of uh, the ease of servicing. You know, uh, you pretty much find any watchmaker out there to like service one of these, no problem. So people that talk about like, you know, oh, I'm not going to buy that watch because it doesn't have one of the uh, one of the in-house movements that Tudor makes, which technically, you know, it's, it's like semi-in-house. I mean, but whatever. Um, now the crown is signed there uh, with the Tudor shield, I believe. Let me see if I can zoom in a bit more. Beautiful brushing on the on the case there, it, and you know, obviously, and you have the top of the case is nice and polished. So there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, diff, you know different finishes on the watch. Obviously, what really stands out the most is that beautiful fluted bezel and the, you know the little diamonds on it. You know, the, it's just it's just a stunning watch. And I just want I just you know honestly I, I wanted to buy this watch for my wife because I wanted her to have something that looked like this and you know without paying Rolex money kind of giving you a little side-by-side -side look there of the style and the glamour 39 versus 34 millimeters uh, I think uh, 34 is a well at least for my wife I think it fits her wrist quite well I don't think I'd want to go to 36 with her wrist because uh, she honestly so uh, I think 34 is pretty safe if you're looking for uh, a nice watch for your significant other. Uh, they look quite nice together. I think they, obviously I bought, I want, you know, at the time I was I was leaning more towards the glamour because I wanted that day day, uh, I wanted the day day look more like, more than the, just the day just look. But now, now I'm like second guessing my thought. I wish, I kind of wish I would have gone with the, uh, with a nice steel and gold like style here, but uh, whatever, it's, you know, I'm, so, I'm still very happy with my glamour as well. Let me give you a quick wrist shot, even though it is 34, and it might look ridiculous, but let's do it anyway. You know, honestly, I could probably pull this off. Um, it does look a little small, but you know, uh, it can, you know, theoretically, it does not look that bad. And I can see how, let me take off my glove. I can kind of see how, it, you know, men could wear a 34 millimeter watch with no, no problem. Um, I, I would, I think I'd be happier if it were 30. They do make a 38 millimeter version, which is the one I would gravitate towards. Probably wouldn't go with 41 because it's, it's, this is more of a dress watch. Uh, might be a little too big, but uh, I could probably pull off both of those and I could probably even pull off this one. And uh, yeah, looks really cool. Honestly, I'm kind of, like I said, I'm very, I'm like jealous. Uh, I guess my final thoughts on the watch are if you're looking for the Rolex look without Rolex money and even at retail, I think this is a $3,500 watch. I paid about $2,400 with tax, $24 something. Uh, so I think I have, I think I, so basically a quarter to get a steel and gold uh, Rolex Datejust. Uh, we're talking about 10 grand or so. I'll probably put a picture up there right now. And uh, so if you're looking for that look and you know, you want to get, your some, get yourself something, or you probably, it's a hell of a lot cheaper than the Rolex. And uh, Gets you that look, and it, you know it's got the brand pedigree made by comp made by the by Rolex's sister company. You really can't go wrong, honestly. And uh, I think uh, I feel very happy that I bought this watch for my wife. I, I think she's happy too. And uh, Tudor, the Tudor style, man, it is probably the mo most underappreciated Tudor watch out there. And you need to get these things before it's discontinued because. Who knows what they're gonna do uh, going forward. But anyway, if you have any questions about the watch, you got any questions about the Tudor Glamour as well, you got any questions about uh, watches in general, feel free to leave them in the comments and I'll see you in the next one.